want to welcome everybody to the board meeting. This is the meeting where we set the agenda for our meeting next week. And next week, our meeting will be on Monday instead of Tuesday because of the 4th of July holiday. And tonight, we're going to start off with a number of presentations. And so the first person we would like to call up would be our finance director, Sarah Lenahan. Thank you, Vice Mayor Webb, members of the board. Um, tonight, I'm standing in front of you as the Arkansas representative for the Government uh, Finance Officers Association, um, in addition to being your finance director. So the first award that I would like to present tonight in that capacity <laughs> is um, the GFOA Distinguished Budget Award for our 2017 budget document. GFOA established the Budget Document Presentation Award um, in 1984 to encourage and assist state and local governments to prepare budget documents of the very highest quality that reflect both the guidelines established by the National Advisory Council on state and local budgeting and the government finance officer's best practices on budgeting. Documents submitted to the Budget Award Program are reviewed by selected members of the GFOA professional staff and by outside reviewers with experience in public sector budgeting. The city was notified in September 2017 that it had received the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for the 2017 budget document. Um, in addition, we submitted our 2018 budget document. We're awaiting notification of that award. Um, the City of Little Rock is one of only five municipalities in Arkansas and nine governmental entities in total in Arkansas that received this award. The City has achieved the award 23 times. Um, first, and I'm going to ask uh, Silas to come up in a few moments, but I want to recognize Ember Strange, the Assistant Finance Director, who has responsibility over budgeting, Laverne Duval, our former budget officer who retired in, uh, at the end of February after more than 40 years with the city. So that was a huge loss to us. Um, and then especially Silas Rofe, our budget analyst, for his work in preparing the budget document. In addition, I want to recognize Anita Worley, the comptroller, Scott Massanelli, treasury manager, Montoya Magruder, asset accountant, and Karen Curry, the grants manager, for contributing revenue trend information, debt information, capital asset information, and grant information required for the budget document. I also want to acknowledge our colleagues and the contributions that are made by each department with respect to the goals, accomplishments, and performance measures that go into the document. Then finally, I want to recognize the city manager, the mayor, all of you for your commitment to excellence and transparency in financial reporting. Without your support, the Finance Department could not achieve this recognition. So I want to present this award to Silet, Silas Rofe and ask that he come up and say a few words. Silas. Vice Mayor. Board of Directors, and City Manager. It is an honor to receive the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award from GFOA once again. The Budget Office endeavors each year to produce an informative document of high quality and substance that meets and or exceeds the standards of the awarding entity. The citizens of Little Rock deserve and expect no less, and we take pride in meeting those expectations that this ward confirms. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Bruce, do you want to come down? Go ahead and hold the award. We'll get a picture. Thank you, sir. Okay. 
the next award that I would like to present tonight is the Government Finance Officer Award for Excellence in Financial Reporting. This is for our 2016 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Um, I do want to let you know that we just completed the 2017 Annual Financial Report. It's now uploaded on the City's website. You will be getting your copies in the next week or so. <laughs> We're having them printed now. Um, but uh, this award is for last year's. It takes about a six-month period for these to be judged, and it takes about six months to complete, some, complete the uh, preparation of the document. So it's about a year-long process. Um, once again, GFOA established the Certificate of Achievement in Excellence for financial reporting in 1945 to encourage and assist, um, assist state and local governments to go beyond the minimum requirements of generally accepted accounting principles and to prepare comprehensive annual financial reports that evidence the spirit of transparency and full disclosure. The goal of the program is not to assess the financial health of the government, but rather to ensure that others, users of the financial estate, um, statements, have the information they need in order to do just that. Um, the reports submitted to the CAFR program are reviewed by selected members of the GFOA professional staff and by a GFOA special review committee, which comprises individuals with expertise in public sector financial reporting and includes financial statement preparers, independent auditors, academics, and other finance professionals. The City of Little Rock is one of only seven municipalities in Arkansas to receive this award for the 2016 CAFR. In total, the city has received this award 35 times, more than any other munis municipality in the state. Um, completion of the CAFR has become more and more complex in recent years, with additional disclosures required to improve transparency and provide information on governmental entities that would be comparable to that of a publicly traded corporation. Um, the uh, Pension footnote disclosures alone for the city are 30 pages of our comprehensive annual financial report. Um, additional disclosures coming up in the next few years will include post-employment benefits, uh, new rules on lease accounting, fiduciary activities, and direct borrowings. I want to recognize Ember Strange, the Assistant Finance Director, and her superb staff, including Anita Worley, Comptroller, the accounting and reporting staff, including Octavia Ashford, Ben Damgard, Ben Jurgens, Montoya Magruder, Jean Sway, Nancy Warfield, uh, Scott Massanelli, the Treasury Manager, Grants Manager Karen Curry, and the grant staff, including Jean Bruner, Amanda Jones, and Lottie Keaton, and the Internal Audit Manager Debbie Carrero, and the Fiscal Systems Administrator Jonathan Burns. They all play a major role in completion of this financial document, so I want to recognize all of them. Um, once again, credit must be given to the Mayor, the Board of Directors, the City Manager, and City Staff for their unfailing support of maintaining the highest standards of professionalism in management of the City of Little Rock finances. I'm going to ask Ember Strange, our Assistant Finance Director, to come forward and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Vice Mayor, members of the board, city manager, you know, I started writing um, a speech on things to say, and I'm just not really good at doing that because I get tongue-tied and things. But I think, first of all, we all need to give Sarah a round of applause because she does such a good job leading our department. And she stands up here and she talks about all of us and the good job that we do, but, um, you know, she leads this department with the utmost integrity and um, she has a true passion for finance and the city she leads. And so I wanted to make sure that you all know that because um, she is um, a great boss and we couldn't do our job without her. But um, as I'm up here um, receiving this award, I just want to make sure you know what a wonderful finance department we have. And we get to come every year and we get to tell you, hey, look at us. We're wonderful and we're getting these awards. But as Sarah said, you know, every year it gets harder and harder. And I'm going to try to hold it together. This year was really hard um, <coughs> for me. I had a, a health scare and 
the team really came together for me. So we're not only a great finance team, but we're a great family. And so the funny part is our payroll manager actually beat my husband to the hospital. I mean, that's how um, wonderful we all are. But we work tirelessly and endlessly for the city to ensure that, you know, vendors are paid, employees are paid, that we get these awards and we get to come up here once a year and tell you how wonderful we are because we really are. And... Um, I just want to say thank you, and I couldn't do my job without Sarah, without Anita Worley, our comptroller, and all of my staff, because they all work really hard. So thank you. Thank you, Amber. And while Bruce is coming down for this picture, I would also like our finance team to stand. I know a lot of you are here, so please, everybody stand. Interns, too, everybody. <laughs> Grace, will you come down for a photo? Here. And I, I apologize that we do have so many uh, tonight to present at once, but I like to invite the finance team to come to one board meeting and not to have to attend multiple, so I group them all together. But <laughs> thank you. Um, the next award that I would like to present is the Arkansas Government Finance Officers Association Finance Officer of the Year Award to Miss Ember Strange. Um, Ember was honored at the state and GFOA conference last July. Um, each year, members of the Arkansas Government Finance Officers Association have the opportunity to nominate one of their peers uh, for Finance Officer of the Year. Nominations include a discussion of the responsibility, the attitude, the initiative, and leadership qualities of the person under consideration. I actually am the one that nominated Ember this past year, and I was very honored that she was selected as our AGFOA Finance Officer of the Year. As Assistant Finance Director, Ember has responsibility for the accounting and reporting, the budget, accounts payable, and payroll. In addition, she has primary responsibility for preparation of the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report and the budget document. You obviously know she does a very good job, as we've just been recognized for those awards. Um, she also uh, is uh, a representative of the finance department on several committees that are formed to address issues or policies. She served on the city's police vehicle replacement committee and was a key leader on the team that uh, completed a major upgrade of the city's enterprise resource planning software. Uh, in addition, Ember evaluates and studies new pronouncement and follows up with external professionals for guidance as needed. I could go on and on about Ember, but I do want to highlight her leadership. Ember serves on the Government Finance Officers Committee on Auditing, Accounting, and Financial Reporting. The committee assists, assists public finance officers in their efforts to utilize sound auditing and accounting standards and produce transparent financial reports on the health of state and local finance activities. It were, the committee, this national committee, works very closely with the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, and other organizations, and recommends best practices for effective government finance operations. Associated with her role on this committee, Emily or Ember served as moderator for breakout sessions during the 2016 and the 2017 GFOA conferences. In 2017, Ember graduated from the Harvard Kennedy School Executive Education Program, senior executives in state and local government. In addition, she attended GFOA's Advanced Government Financial Institute in 2017. Both of those programs are very selective, um, and we're very honored that she was able to participate in those. And finally, Ember serves as first vice president on the Arkansas Government Finance Officers Association. So once again, I would like to recognize Ember. Uh, 
uh, vice mayor, members of the board, city manager. I just want to thank you for this, and um, I couldn't have done this without my staff because I couldn't have attended those conferences if they weren't able to handle things while I was gone. And thank you, Sarah, for nominating me, and thank you for listening. <laughs> One more. So um, very recently, uh, we had another award winner in our department, um, the Arkansas chapter of the National Institute of Government Procurement um, awarded Abdul with the 2018 Arkansas Purchasing Manager Award. Um, Abdul Cabal uh, uh, recently served as president of the Arkansas chapter of the National Institute of Governmental Purchasing from March 2016 to February 2017. In addition, in 2017, he graduated from a pre prestigious uh, NFBPA executive leadership program known as ELI. The city's purchasing division continues to receive recognition. They were featured last year in an article by Route 50, entitled Business as Usual, can be the riskiest procurement approach. It highlighted the work that the city's been doing as part of the What Works City Initiative and the panel that Abdul served on at last year's summit in New York. In addition, the Harvard Kennedy School Government Performance Lab recently published another article that showcases Little Rock and its results-driven contract contracting initiative. The project feature will be part of their solution book and made available to entities across the country. Just this last weekend, Abdul implemented the city's new LR Procure site that registers vendors to view and participate in bidding opportunities. In addition, his team published a video on doing business with the city of Little Rock and has been performing training to vendors and city departments on the new system. It's this type of innovation that moved him to the forefront of his peers. I'm very proud to recognize Abdul Cabal as the Arkansas NIGP Purchasing Manager of the Year. And not only that, the, um, the state award winners are then elevated at the national convention, and the national award winner will be selected from the state winners. So Abdul has a chance here in August to become the National Purchasing Manager of the Year. So I want to recognize Abdul Cabal. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. That's a long shot. <laughs> but Vice Mayor, <laughs> members of the board, city manager, thank you for your time and having me here. But I want to take this opportunity to also recognize my colleagues and my team who supported me through all this. And it wouldn't, I wouldn't have been here without them. So thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Once again, I just want to um, let you know just how very proud I am of this outstanding finance team, and thank you for your support. Thank you, Sarah, and we're proud of everybody on the team, and we're always delighted to see you all when we get these awards. Uh, Director Fortson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I uh, would echo what uh, Director Webb has said that uh, Glad to see you have your finance staff up here and give due credit to all who participated in it. And I would add to what uh, Ember said that uh, one of the things I admire is the fact that you come up here once a month and listen to my same stupid questions on some of the financial statements and always answer them with a smile. But note one thing. The questions always involve something over which you have no control, tax results. Nobody up here has ever questioned, to my knowledge, any part of the financial reporting system you have on the other side. And that, to me, is the highest tribute that uh, this group of 10 people can pay to your operation. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director. Um, Michael Drick, the Fitness Graham Challenge presentation, please. Thank you, v Vice Mayor and City Board members. We're going to move the Put him over just a moment so we can accommodate the children. 
Okay, so uh, Vice Mayor, City Board members, Mr. Moore, it's a pleasure to be here tonight uh, to recognize um, outstanding achievement by students in our eight Love Your School Partner Schools in Physical Activity. Um, to provide you with a, a, a baseline on what Fitness Gram is and how it's perceived by principals and PE coaches in our district, uh, we put together a little video we're going to show right now, and then we'll come back and, and uh, recognize the students. So, Mr. Carter? We found that Love Your School at Brady has really been a great asset for our staff, students, and the parents. The boys and girls have really been excited about the lessons that they have each week and interacting with the interns that come into the school. The support that we received with Love Your School as far as with the gardening and the planting and the harvesting, that information has really been beneficial to our boys and girls because many of them would not experience it if they did not have that opportunity at school. So Love Your School has really been a great grant and support to us here at Brady. The Fitness Gram program w worked seamless with us. We got interns from Euler and they worked perfect with us. They dug right in and helped us. We got curriculum from ULR. So we focused on three areas when we were doing the fitness gram uh, activities. We focused on the push-ups, curl-ups, and the sit and reach. And basically the push-ups helped with their mu the student's muscular strength, uh, upper body, and it showed them that as long as they have room that they can stretch out on the floor, they can do this the rest of their life, whether they're in an apartment, a house, in a park, it doesn't matter. Anywhere you can drop down and do it. I would uh, speak of a personal experience with one of the fifth grade boys. Um, when he took the pre-assessment, he was a little bit overweight. And after hearing the knowledge and going through the classes, I've noticed the weight loss. And just the other day, I was talking with him about that. And it's that he had decided that he wanted to eat healthier. He wanted to make a lifestyle change. And so he decided that that's what he was going to do. And he wanted to be prepared for the post-assessment with the, the fitness gram. And so therefore, then he worked extremely hard to make sure he was eating healthier, eating more salads, drinking more water, more physically fit. He enrolled in a football program, basketball program, and baseball. And so uh, through his knowledge that he gained through the program, then he decided he wanted to make sure to make those changes. We can learn basketball, we can learn baseball, but we might not have gloves, we might not have balls, we might not be able to afford this or do this, but with this, you can take with you anywhere and then they can use it in any aspect of life. When you look at the whole child approach, uh, when we are not only taking just fragments, but it all ties into the academic improvement of the students. Because if they have nutritious meals, they are physically fit, getting proper rest, drinking the amount of water that they need. It helps their minds to be more prepared and ready to receive the information that they're learning each and every day. And it helps them be a better student well-rounded. And so most definitely Love Your School has provided that support because again, as I've mentioned, not only are we looking at the fitness piece, we're looking at the healthy eating lifestyles, trying to expose children to all of the, this, that whole aspect. And it's a lifestyle change, and so the children have taken that, and we've seen an improvement in our student performance um, that I feel a lot of what the lo Love Your School has provided, I feel that it most definitely has helped to support that gain in academic performance. So I'd like to recognize Mr. Tyrone Harris, who's the principal of um, Brady Elementary School, who's with us tonight. Mr. Harris, would you stand up? Thank you. Mr. Harris was the principal at uh, Martin Luther King Elementary School when we started this in 2010, and is now over at Brady doing another excellent job. I'd also like to recognize Mr. Mike Poor, who's the superintendent of our schools. So uh, you may remember the presidential fitness program back in our day. Um, fitness Graham is the presidential fitness program reincarnated. And so uh, we started it this year at our eight partner schools, and we started a challenge. And the challenge is 
move, how many schools can move the, the largest proportion of their student body from the unhealthy zone to the healthy zone. And I'm happy to say that Dodd Elementary School was a grand prize winner on that endeavor. And we also have identified uh, eight children, one from each elementary school, whom we're going to recognize with awards, uh, some sneakers and a medallion and some other things in just a minute. Mr. Moore and uh, Mr. Poor, are you going to help us with this? Um, our first awardee um, is Ashton Nichols from Bale, and I understand that Ashton has not arrived yet, so we're going to move right on to the second awardee, who is uh, third grader Oscar Sanchez Romero from Booker Arts Magnet Elementary School. Oscar? Where is she? Oh, I didn't see her. Hi, Oscar. This is Mr. Poor. Congratulations, Oscar. Can you present the bag and I'll present the medallion? Okay. Congratulations. Here's your certificate. Thank you. Yeah, we got to get a picture here of Oscar. Go ahead to the next one. Our next awardee is fifth grader Caleb Patrick from Brady Elementary School. I was remiss in recognizing Dr. Sadie Mitchell, who is here, the Associate Superintendent of Elementary Schools. Caleb is an outstanding student. He always is willing to learn and is very coachable. He is always trying to better himself. He gives his best regardless of the task or challenge. He's very polite and courteous, and our faculty thinks he has never had a bad day. He is a joy to be around, and he excelled in all three aspects of the Fitness Grant Program. And the staff are very proud to Caleb, of Caleb and congratulate him on his selection as the Brady Elementary School Love Your School Fitness Gram Challenge Outstanding Student. <laughs> Our fourth awardee is uh, fifth grader Berju Karabakacek from Carver Elementary School. <laughs> Berku comes to school every day with a great attitude and ready to excel, whether in regular classroom or the, in the specialist areas. Um, she does anything asked of her and it amazes with her sit-ups and push-ups. She has been with Carver since pre-K and over the years the faculty have noted as she has grown academically, personally, and as an athlete. Berku Karabakacek. Our fifth awardee is fifth grader Melody Brito from David O'Dodd Elementary School. Melody had the most reps. Melody had the most repetitions completed in any category with 35 curl ups. And according to the staff, she could have accomplished more, but we had to stop her. <laughs> Melody is an outstanding student, thoughtful and kind to her schoolmates, and a tenacious competitor. She is deserving to represent Dodd Elementary School as the outstanding Love Your School Fitness Gram Challenge student athlete. Our sixth awardee is fourth grader Brandicia White from Meadowcliff Elementary School. <laughs> Brandicia always comes to PE class with a smile and a great ready to work attitude. She had the most improvement among all students of all the exercises we tested during the fitness gram pre and post test and is the outstanding Love Your School fitness gram challenge student athlete from Meadowcliff Elementary School. Our seventh awardee is fifth grader Emmanuel Buchanan from um, Romine Elementary School. This is from the staff. Emmanuel is a special student. He is hardworking, diligent, kind to his classmates, and he is very competitive. In short, Emmanuel likes to excel. During the Fitness Gram Challenge, our school staff observe Emmanuel challenging others to do their best in repetitions and exercise technique. We're proud to name Emmanuel as a Love Your School Fitness Gram Challenge Outstanding Student Athlete representing Romine Elementary School. 
Our final awardee is Malcolm Jackson from Williams Traditional Magnet School. Malcolm is a fifth grader and is one of the highest performing student athletes attending Williams Traditional Magnet. During our fall and spring fitness gram assessments, Malcolm scored highest in both sit-ups and push-ups in the Love Your School Fitness Gram Challenge. He has a great attitude and work ethic and deserving of the Outstanding Student Athlete of the Year for the Love Your School Fitness Gram Challenge at Williams Traditional Magnet. Thank you all very much for this time. Fitness is hugely important to our children as well as nutrition. And we in Love Your School teaches two fundamental aspects of life, proper nutrition, physical activity, uh, as a baseline for wellness throughout life. I appreciate your support very much, and thank you for your attention tonight. Vice Mayor. Thank you very much, and congratulations to all the students and their families. Vice Mayor, we also have a great leader in Mr. Drake. Any Saturday morning, you're going to find him either on roller skates or a bicycle down at the river. Thank you. And we have... Um, the Downtown Mural School Project Recognition, and I believe that Carol Worley, you are going to make this presentation. I Will am you give, indeed. Give, uh, give folks a few minutes to, to shuffle in and out? Yes. Ready? Okay. Yes. Okay, so um, what we did, I'm Carol Worley with the Downtown Little Rock Partnership. I'm also a, an attorney whose office is down on South Main. Um, and I am on the public spaces um, committee of the Downtown Little Rock Partnership. And we're trying to think of ways that we can make our city more, the public spaces of our city more beautiful. And one of the things that really has really bothered me is the empty buildings downtown on Main. So I was trying to think of a way to make those um, not so much empty spaces as more something people would want to go look at instead of things that people want to avoid. So we came up with a concept of murals and we had um, reached out to all of the high schools, a couple of clubs here in Little Rock um, to do a mural and they're uh, seven feet by 18 feet. They're on canvas so they're soft, they can roll up. I put grommets on the top of all of them and we are hanging them in different vacant building windows. Right now they are all hung um, in the uh, Donaghy building, which is an empty building down at the corner of 7th and Main. And we've also hung three of them across the um, Department of Human Services skywalks. Um, so on Main Street proper, across the sidewalk at 7th and Main, there are two of them. And then there's one on 7th on that skywalk that's facing east and west. Um, we have, I think, students here today and teachers who have worked on them. Um, would you all stand up if you've either participated on it or, or helped with it? And they have done a phenomenal job. The money for these went, came from the Art Place Foundation and the Educational Foundation of America. Uh, they paid for the supplies and for the um, um, paint for them. The schools that we have participating, um, we have, I guess, seven of them up right now. Um, Central High School, Parkview, Hall High, North Little Rock High, Episcopal Collegiate, and Brandon House um, have all already given us uh, their murals. We have several of them that are still out there. Um, I think Pulaski Academy we have too. Uh, we have East M, Lisa Academy, Catholic, Mount St. Mary's, uh, Robinson High School, and then the Billy Mitchell Boys and Girls Club are all in the process of doing theirs for us. So we'll have 13 of them when we're finished. And we have the ability to move these kind of at a moment's notice. Like I've already been contacted by the um, Cornbread Festival folks and they wanted to know if we would put them on, the, could move them to the fence during the, where the construction is down on South Main. 
during the cornbread festival, so they're easy to kind of pick up and move. Um, but the students have worked really hard, and as you can see, I think there was a slideshow while I was gabbing. Um, but um, they all really look good and make the buildings look good, so I really just wanted the board to recognize them for that. And thank you very much. And I don't know if any of you all have noticed, but there are, we have had um, uh, plywood put on the facades of several of the empty buildings downtown on Main Street. Um, and we're gonna have, I've gotten commitments from the other two buildings, and that's my daughter Claire climbing on the window there. <laughs> but I've got commitments from the other two buildings. So all four of the buildings that are vacant right now that don't have the murals, not the Donaghy, we're going to put murals on those. Um, so um, if any of you know anyone who wants to sponsor that or if the city wants to sponsor, that'd be phenomenal. But we actually have five Arkansas artists who we reached out to to put some kind of fancy mural on it. So anyway, that should be coming hopefully before September. Um, so far it's all been private pay, but you know we will take money from wherever it comes unless it's Columbia Drug Lords and then we don't really want it. So. <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Could we have the students stand up again so we can give them a little bit more recognition? Oh, can I say something? One more thing. I'm sorry. Yes. I meant when I was introducing them, I meant to tell you the teachers because the teachers themselves actually did a whole lot of work on this too in coordinating. At the Brandon House Cultural and Arts Performing Center, we had Pam Bax, and I think Celeste actually brought, that's the bulk of kids down here um, that worked on that one. Uh, at Little Rock Catholic, we had Mimi Parrish. Little Rock Centric is Rex Deloney. Episcopal Collegiate was Joy Schultz. East M is Virginia King. Little Rock Hall is Brent Hawley. Lisa Academy was Kyle Brown. Uh, the Billy Mitchell Boys and Girls Club is Stephen Rifle. And Sage, I don't know her last name, but I think she's going to be the one working on it. Um, at Mount St. Mary, we have Marianne Noley. Uh, North Little Rock High was Tanya Wenzel. Little Rock Park View uh, was Matt Terravest. Pulaski Academy was Randy Curtis. And Joti Robinson is Chris Swatty. So all those teachers also, I think some of them are here, but they certainly deserve recognition also for the work that they put into that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And congratulations to all of you. Director Peck, yeah, yes, if I, if I could just invite Audrey Carruthers up to show her mural in a small format. Uh, I've known Audrey since the day she was born. Uh, amazing artist who's getting ready to do a college visit to the Rhode Island School of Design. But uh, Audrey, show everybody the, the miniature form of your mural and her proud parents and grandparents are out there. So, amazing, talented Arkansas artist. Show, show, hold it up, Audrey. I didn't know it was going to be called up here. I, well, you, you, you toted it up here, so I figure you might have had a pretty good idea I might ask you to do this. All right. Um, yeah, this is the design for the mural. It's going to take a while to paint, but... Oh, okay. So, may I hold it this? For you? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, this is uh, um, the 7-inch by 18-inch... Um, sketch I did for the mural for Mount St. Mary's. Um, all, the, all the species in there are animals from Arkansas. So I thought that'd be a good idea. And um, yeah, I also hid Waldo somewhere in there. So if you want to take the time to find him, he's in there. It, it gets people to, to look at it a while because I hid a lot of fun stuff in there. It was really fun making. And yeah. Thanks, Audrey. Yeah. but. I'm not going to be the only one painting it. All the, all the fantastic artists at Mount St. Mary's are all going to help paint it. They're all super great. And, yeah. Thank you. Okay. I want to thank everybody. That concludes the presentations. And if you will now go to your agenda. Um, the first thing, we have two modifications. And I want to see if there are any questions on the modifications. Seeing no questions on the modifications, if you will take a couple of minutes and look over items one through six on the consent agenda. Okay. 
Next, we move to the planning and development items. Um, items seven through nine. Director Adcock. Mr. Moore, item seven. What is going to be the use of this property? Come on up, Jamie. Item seven. Scott, if you pull up the site plan for it. What they're doing, uh, Director Adcock, is uh, they're rezoning this property to an agriculture use. The uh, that is the athletic club, and they've done that in the past on the adjacent property around them. And so they purchased that property, and uh, and they're looking to rezone that for that use. And then the planning commission approved it with uh, uh, requirements on there or uh, stipulations that they do not put livestock you know on the property <coughs> you know there's a list of them uh, but they're gonna let me pull it up I'll tell you it does include all hoofed animals correct yes all it does include those so in other words it's more of a tax purpose for the land agricultural than it is for the use of the land and then they have to have a buffer uh, between them and the residential that is just to the south of them but it does name hoofed animals let me pull it up because sure. this is uh, close enough to those houses that it looks closer than 300 feet and hooked animals are not allowed <laughs> in a city within 300 feet of a residence raising any livestock and poultry is what is listed okay that is the hooved. That's the hooved. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Questions on eight or nine? Vice Mayor, number nine, uh, we originally thought it was going to be a resolution because of a state contract. Uh, it's gone back to being an ordinance as a sole source ordinance. It may still be a resolution. We're trying to track down some original legislation. So if it ends up on the consent agenda Tuesday, that's the reason why. Thank you. It's a renewal, correct? Thank you. Item 10. Director Adcock. Mr. Moore, I'd like a presentation on item 10, please. Mr. Collins. Do we have a picture of this, Mr. Collins? Yes, ma'am. I know I'm a picture of the buildings, not a drawing. Um, of the existing buildings that are of out the, there of now? Of the six buildings that's out there now, yes, sir. Uh, there is not run, one right now in the write-up for the public hearing. We make sure we put them on there for you. I would like pictures. I'd also like pictures of how close they are to the houses in that neighborhood. <coughs> Let me write these down. You want the you want the, the distances? The small houses on Brown Street. Now you're looking at the distances to the adjacent properties. Yes. Okay. Scott, if you will go back to that one you just had up. Oh, okay. The adjacent properties would be that that little looks like the cleared areas where they're sitting on those lots. The house that we're going to do the distance to would be the one just to the south. Do you want the one also across the alleyway? Now this does not have the buildings on there, correct? No, that's that's an older aerial from Google. They 
I'll have to get those and send those to the board. If you don't have the pictures, I've got copies of the pictures on my iPad. We have them. Okay. Yes, it's on that vacant lot. Okay. Okay, so we will get the pictures on Friday. Director Adcock, do you have additional questions on this? No, that's all. Okay. I have several people in the queue. I want to ask if any of them are about this particular item. Okay, Director Hendricks. Come on. I just wanted to let the board know that you've done your work. I attended both planning commission meetings. I know this individual personally. So you've done your job, so don't worry. It will not be approved. I hope that it will not be approved. And the residents um, were in full force at both planning commission meetings. I know all of them personally. So if I have anything to do with it, that building will not be there. Yeah, and this was a denial at the planning commission. So what the board will be voting on is an appeal uh, to that. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Director Ryrick, is yours on this item? Okay, then Director Ryrick. Hi there. Um, I attended the Planning Commission meeting um, when this came up, and uh, it seemed like there was a lot of people that were opposed to this. Did I understand it to be that these buildings are already there? Yes, they are already there. They was brought in, and they were under enforcement for us. We had uh, no, gave them notice uh, for placement of a manufactured home on a residential area. Uh, the applicant applied for a conditional use permit on the original lot, which was not this lot, and come before the Planning Commission, and it was denied. Instead of an appeal, uh, in that 30-day appeal process, they come back with the second application on a separate lot that they owned adjacent to it which by our codes you know it is a separate application so it went through the process again same manufactured homes um, but a different um, look a layout they presented at the second planning commission more of an architectural rendering of what the buildings will look like pieced together uh, in that and and was more of a uh, modern style you know configuration and that is when that's the latest planning commission where that was uh, denied at the planning commission okay and is that like how many how many modular homes are they trying to put together is it six. Seven, six there are six modular homes the new the concept is to the current application is to configure them in a square type configuration with a center courtyard and that was on that site plan the sketch plans got yeah, and are that. these are these used mobile homes that they brought in there or are they brand new they are used well from the applicants description of where they picked them up at it was uh, purchased from a, uh, a company that was using them like a construction you know staging and they brought them in so they are not a standard manufactured home it's a one that was uh, more used for that type of yeah. use are each one of them like self-contained they have restrooms and all that kind of stuff in them each one of the six buildings we did not go in and investigate inside of them mm -hmm. uh, they uh, he was not proposing to keep them all they will have you know uh, they'll be joined together so they'll have different uses you know for that okay thank you thank you <laughs> And before I call on Director Wright, just one more reminder that we meet next week on Monday, not Tuesday. Uh, Director Wright. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Um, I'm asking for just a, a, a point of, uh, yeah, just to get something out that needs to be out. And I'm going to ask the city manager to assist me with this. My phone has been blowing up. I can't walk into a building anywhere without someone uh, bringing this issue up to me. And it's about the CareLink building uh, being uh, the CareLink closing that program at 12th and Cleveland. And I wanted to let the public know that uh, we have been attempting to address this and try to uh, maintain that 
facility uh, in some manner. Uh, I learned of this May 25th, and when I got back after Memorial Day, I uh, contacted the CEO of CareLink, uh, Mr. Luke Mattingly, and we met there, and he took me on a tour, and I could not go, on, go through the tour without people just begging us to please do something do something, do something. So it was really kind of heart-wrenching. So I, I went back and I uh, put together something and I presented it to Mr. Moore and asking him to uh, please look at this and see if there's any way that uh, we could uh, maintain or either take over the facility. Because what's very clear to me is that we in this city do not have a designated facility that simply addresses people 50 years and older. We do not. Our programming is spread around through our community centers and uh, at the Jim Daly Fitness Center, but there's no designated space. And I have had many of my uh, seniors that I interact with frequently tell me that they go over to the Hayes Center or they go to CareLink for the uh, aquatics and that kind of thing and, and a lot more of the activities that are available. So when this came up, I thought it would be an outstanding idea, but I know we are in uh, difficult times financially, but I did want Mr. Moore to give you a, uh, a report out on where we are with trying to save that program or that facility so that the, pub the viewing audience will know and public will hear what, that we did try to do something. Uh, Vice Mayor, members of the board, um, you know, at this point, uh, I, I met with the uh, I've met with the CEO on multiple occasions. Um, I've uh, asked him to uh, I've kind of put together a conceptual plan, uh, and I'm waiting some information from him. And I would like to have the ability to get that information, review it, and sort of negotiate and, and probably not do it on camera. Right. Uh, so that's sort of where we are right now. Okay. Well, I know you had not come back to me and said anything, so I wanted you to explain, because the program was slated to close June 30. That's, that's, that was the urgency. That's what everybody is concerned about. And I know there are at least 500, over 500 people that attend that program on a regular basis, and I would not like to see those people displaced. But that's that issue. Now, a related issue is something I want to read to you, and I will take what she gave me seven minutes, but I'm only going to take three, okay? So just bear with me. I don't do this often, but this is, this is something that I think predicated based upon the issue that uh, re involved in CareLink. And uh, my narrative here says, what is the older person's place in our community? How can we as a city, maximize and maintain productivity into late adulthood by tapping the wealth of elders' experience, wisdom, and expertise. How can we provide older adults who elect to age in Little Rock with a variety of options in retirement, leisure and recreational activities, housing and lifelong learning? I was concerned about these issues when I established the West Central Senior Activity Center 14 years ago. Now that, now that I will celebrate my 59th birthday next month on July the 10th, thank you very much. Happy birthday to me. I'm considered a senior citizen, and I want to know the answers to these questions more than ever. As we move into the 21st century, these demographic realities require people living in our city to take stock of what an aging person means to them. We as policymakers need to ensure that there are resources, programs, and policies in place to provide much needed support and information for an increasing older population. While we have a commission on youth and families, children, youth, and family services, the primary focus of that group is youth. I have their uh, master plan right here. There's nothing in here about seniors and their needs. And I don't personally know of a document that addresses that issue. Now, I believe we need an advisory group that addresses the specific needs of seniors. Therefore, I am proposing that we establish an advisory committee to assist us in addressing the needs of this population. Now, 
the duties that I'm asking this advisory committee to undertake would be to promote the dignity and independence of Little Rock's aging population, to examine current city services and programs and, by, and submitting recommendations to us as a board, advising the board regarding city ordinances affecting older residents, uh, identifying the needs and recognizing the contributions of seniors, working to improve intergenerational opportunities in the city, and advocating on issues that impact our seniors. Currently, programs for seniors are under our Parks and Recreation Department. Now, due to this focus on recreation, I do not believe that Parks is the best department for senior programming. Therefore, I propose that this group be formed by the city manager and be directed from his office. However, one of the subjects that the group should review is what department is the best fit to address the issues as they relate to seniors. Because I don't know. It may be, may be Parks and Recreation. I don't know. I don't think so. However, the initial committee I'm proposing should be made up of nine members, one from each of the seven wards and three at-large representatives. Once the group is established, they should meet monthly for the next six months and come back to the board with some recommendations for 2019. I'm proposing as of the first order of business for the, that the advisory committee undertake a discussion of quality of life issues related to the senior population. The advisory committee will not be in pursuit of funds to deliver services or programs, and it does not have a predetermined agenda. The major driving question is, what do residents of, in the 50 and older age group of all ethnic backgrounds, all economic strata, and all walks of life, from, all physically, uh, from, from the physically active to the frail, think they will need to define and maintain an acceptable standard of living and lifestyle in, in the city of Little Rock in our future? The answer to these questions may require a stu that a study be undertaken to identify these quality of life issues. Therefore, I'm requesting that the city manager allocate funding to hire a consultant to work with this group. I further recommend that a minimum of three community forums be held to allow the citizens of Little Rock to give their opinions. I don't want any of this done in a vacuum because we are all getting older and people need to be able to have weigh in on this stuff. Additionally, information needs to be gathered from providers and consumers, concentrating on the physical health, the mental health, long-term care, a variety of, of uh, issues that, uh, that affect this population. And we can use a variety of means to obtain this information from telephone surveys, online, face-to-face, -face, whatever mechanism they choose to use is fine with me. Findings will be presented in a final report in which public policy options and recommendations will be made and potential public and private development opportunities will be suggested. All of this will help our community plan for and address what Little Rock's aging population desires in the way of services, programs, and facilities in the years to come. This is setting us up for a future. At the end of this, I'd like to have a master plan that addresses the, our aging population, just like we did this for our seniors, our, our youth. I think it's vitally important, and uh, this issue with CareLink that came up with this facility closing, maybe we can't take that building over, but I think we need to be thinking about what we need to do strategically for our senior population. Thank you, Director Wright, and it's certainly a lot to absorb, and I hope that we can see that in writing so we can all uh, contemplate that in the future. Um, I don't see any other questions. Director Wyrick. Well, I just want to follow up with um, what Director Wright was talking about. Um, I found out at the same time she did, there were a number of us on the way to Birmingham, and a number of the people that were on the bus with us indicated that they used, used CareLink. Um, I've, had, <clears throat> I've had several calls from Ward 7 or emails from Ward 7 um, as an outcry that they would like to see CareLink's um, remain open so um, I've already mentioned this to Mr. Moore so I'm anxious to hear what his next meetings will will happen. <coughs> Thank you Director Hendricks. I think that what um, Director Wright is talking about is just, would be the decision between Mr. Moore and the money that we have. I too have visited and was called to come out there that's not my ward I usually don't bother other folks areas so it's left up to Mr. Moore. Thank you. I see no more comments, um, questions. Uh, I don't think it's left up to you. Well, I think it's left up to us as a board of directors. 
because what we're asking for is an advisory committee to assist us in establishing policy. Uh, Mr. Moore carries out policy. I'm asking for us to consider this as a board, and if we need to discuss it further, that's fine. Uh, but uh, when the mayor gets back or next week, I would like us to, and I will have this sent out to you. Uh, make some other copies made in additionally. Thank you. Director Hines. Uh, Director Wright, I said, uh, I think I'd like to hear from Bruce on where, you know, we struggle to fill all of our boards and commissions right now, and I think, an right, an advisory committee, but if we're going to roll it into, I mean, it, the document looked more like a creation of a new commission, but uh, just maybe Bruce could give us a thing or where he thinks it, it fits or <laughs> I don't have to be today, Bruce, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Seeing no other lights on or any other questions, we will come back next Monday. Thank you.